Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm going to show you how to log changes to a table at the table level using a data macro. So it doesn't involve any VBA or any programming in your forms or any of that stuff. You can do it right in the table. There are some limitations, but sometimes this is the technique that you have to use to do what you want. I'll explain why in just a minute. Today's question comes from Derek in Grapevine, Texas, one of my Platinum members. Derek says, I have a unique situation in my office where there are five of us working on the same Microsoft Access data in a backend database. But we all use our own custom front ends because we all know how to work with Access and people like to make their own forms and reports and queries and such. That's fine. But for auditing purposes, I need to know when certain records were changed or added. Since I can't put any controls in at the VB level in the forms, is there any way to audit what was done in the tables directly? Yes, Derek, if you have no control over their front end database, they're making their own forms and stuff, you can't lock it down. All you can do at this point is something called a data macro. Now a data macro is a macro that runs at the table level. So you'll put this in at the back end table and you can use it to do things like log when a record was changed and when a record was added or even deleted. The only downside is a data macro has no idea who did it because the back end doesn't know what users connected. So it'll at least tell you what has been changed. You just won't know who did it. But sometimes that's all you need is to know, okay, these 10 records were added today. These 15 were modified. Good enough. Let me show you how to do it. First of all, I'm marking this as a developer level, even though we're not doing any VBA coding, we're going to be doing a little macro writing, but it's kind of beyond the average beginner user. So I'd recommend if you're new to access, be careful with this stuff because you can mess up your tables. If you're not sure what a split database is and you want to learn more, go watch this video first. In a nutshell, if you want to share your database with multiple people in your office, you put the back end, which is a database file just containing the tables on your server or in someone's shared folder. It doesn't have to be an actual server. And then everybody else gets a front end that's linked to it. That's what a split database is. This video explains more. All right, so I've created a folder called server on my desktop, and I'm just gonna take a copy of my tech help database and copy it in here. All right, there's my database. And I'm gonna split this real quick, just open it up. We're gonna go to database tools. And then move data, access database. This is the split wizard. It's real simple to run. Hit split database. It's going to say, where do you want to put this backend file? Well, let's put it in the same folder. So it's on my desktop in my server folder. And I'm going to just rename this thing real quick backend. Okay. It'll do its magic. There you go. Database successfully split. And now you'll see these are all linked tables, right? And if you hold your mouse over it, it'll show you where the backend file is. Okay, now, if you control the user's front end, you can put whatever logging you want in the forms and, you know, you can, you can lock this stuff down so they can't get to the tables directly, they can't make their own forms, and that's usually how it works. Usually you got one person in the office who, he's the access guy, he's the developer, he makes the changes to the database, but in some certain situations I've worked with, there are other people that want to be able to, you know, make their own front end so they can do a custom accounting report or some custom inventory or whatever, but they still have to connect to your tables. Now with an actual database server like SQL Server, you can get information on what user made changes, but with Access, it doesn't track that. It doesn't have any idea who is connecting to this table. So you could have 10 different front ends on different machines all connecting to the same backend file. So option number one is upgrade to SQL Server. But if you don't want to do that, you can put in a data macro so you can at least know what's going on in the tables. You're not going to know who did it, but you'll at least know the date time and what was changed. Quick side note, I do have a different video that shows you how to track changes in the database with VBA, but this of course assumes you can control the front end. And if you control the front end, you can also keep track of what users logged on and logged off. You can create a, a little table for that too. So check out these other videos if that is something you're interested in. But we don't have that luxury because everyone's got their own separate front ends. Let's say this is Rick's front end. And then I'll just make another copy of this, copy, paste. 
and we'll say this one is Joe's front end, whatever. All right, these are identical databases right now, but they can be, they can have changes in them. But they're both connected to this back end file. So let's open the back end up and let's put a macro in that will track changes to this database. Now, let's say we just want to track the customer to you. You'll have to do this in each table that you want to track changes in. And you can create a separate log table if you want to, right? A log ID and what you know, what customer record was changed and a description and all that. But I already have a contact table set up. Contacts are basically every time you talk to a customer, you register a contact, right? If you've seen a lot of my other databases, you know how this works. So what we could do is we could use the contact T just to track the changes that are made. So we could put a note at the, you know, in the customer's contacts with the customer ID. We can put in here record updated or changed or whatever and the contact date time. All right, well, so we use the contact table as our log table. All right, so go to the customer table, go to design view. And then on the table design pane of the ribbon, you'll see this thing called create data macros. There's a bunch of different options in here. There's after insert, update, delete, before delete, before change, create named macro, and there's all kinds of other stuff you can do. We're going to focus today on after update and after insert. All right, after insert happens when someone adds a record after they've added the record, after update happens, after they've changed something. Okay. Let's start with after update. All right, here it is. It's basic macro builder. If you're familiar with macros, if you're not familiar with working with macros, I do cover them a lot in my advanced classes. We'll talk about them at the end of class. Over here, you got this action catalog, all kinds of different stuff you can use. We don't need it for today. We're going to do something simple. So after the customer T is updated, in other words, they've made all their changes to all the different fields and they either close the form or move to a different record. That's when the after update event kicks in. It's the same as the form level after update event. So we're going to say, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to create a record. These are all the options you can, you have right here. We're going to create a record in what table? We're going to use our log table as the contact T. Okay. Now, what are the actions you can do? Well, we're going to use set field. There's not a lot you can do in here. We're going to set field in this new record that we're creating in contact T. Okay. Now, the name of the field in the contact table, let's start with the customer ID. Okay. We're going to update that to what? Well, I want to put it, I want to put in here the customer ID of the customer that was changed. Okay. So in that case, it's going to be customer T dot customer ID. You see, it comes up in the IntelliSense there. And yes, you have to put customer T dot customer ID in here. Otherwise, it, it won't work. Okay. And next for the description, we'll go set field. This is the same record now. The field in the contact table is description. And we're just going to put in here record updated and now. It'll put the date time that the record was updated in the description field. And that's it. And that's unfortunately all the information you really can get. You can't get who did it again. Okay. All right. So we'll save that. Close it. Close the table. Save changes. Yes. Now let's open the table up. And I'll just change me to uh, Rick. Okay. Now at that moment, after I moved off my record, a contact for me should have been created. Let's go to the end. And there it is right there. See? And I guess we really don't need to put the date time in here because the contact date table automatically puts that in. So we could take that off of there and just put record updated. See how easy that was? See? Now, it doesn't matter who is doing what from what database, right? If I come over here and open up Joe's front end, okay, Joe's front end is connected to that table. So if Joe comes in here and he's got his own custom form, let's say, he goes to his customer, you know, his customer form. Let's say he goes to William Riker and he changes uh, the phone number, whatever. Okay. As soon as he closes that form, let's go back to the table. Take a look in the contact table coming out of the end. All right. There it is. There's record five. That's Will Riker was updated. See? So it doesn't matter, you know, what they're using. They can use a query, a table, a form. It's still going to record. It's still going to record the change at the table level. Let's do one more customer T right click design view data macros. Let's do an after insert event. So you want to know when a new record was added. 
Okay, after insert, we're going to create a record in the contact table. All right, set field. Again, customer ID is going to be customer T dot customer ID. All right, and we're going to set field. Yeah, this, this sometimes doesn't go away. Note to access team. This guy floats here even after I've left that field. Sammy, put that on the list. <laughs> All right, set field. What are we setting? Description. And we'll just put in here record added. Okay, and since this is the after update event, it should have an ID at this point because the ID isn't assigned sometimes until after you put the first bit of information in the record. All right, save it, close it. Close it, save it. All right, now if I come back, let's go into Rick's front end database now. Again, it doesn't matter which front end you use. Did I get it? Did you load? I don't think you, oh, there it goes. My system's been running really slow. I gotta do some optimization. Come on. All right, let's say I, let's say I go to my customer table directly. I'm not using a form. I come in here and mess with Tasha ER, blah, 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 right? Make some changes. Close it. If we go look in the contact table now, Come down to the bottom, and there it is. There's the change. Oh no, I did. I okay. There's the record updated. The brain fart. We were adding a record, right? <laughs> come to the customer table. Come down to the next new one here and add somebody. Okay, and now take a look in the contact table. And there's record added. See. Now here's the thing. If you don't want them to be able to come in here and mess with this stuff, okay, all you have to do is create your log table in the back end file and don't let them link to it. <laughs> you know, don't tell them about it. Name it something else that they wouldn't be interested in because they're obviously they're going to see it, right? Call it something like junk 104 that they won't care about. Because <laughs> that's one of the problems with access is you don't have any user level security at the table level. If you want to learn more about data macros, I do have another tech help video. It's actually a fast tips video. This is a quickie where I just show you the before change event and how to update the last updated field in the table. So you want to know what the date the last updated was at the table level, you can do it here too. It's just, just a little bit more about data macros. But I do cover them in a lot more depth in my Access Advanced Level 6 class. I will include a link to this down below as well if you want to learn more about how these data macros work. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to post them down below. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long 
You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject and I cover Lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.